After Percy was sent off to help on the Little Western, Toby was put in charge of doing Thomas's work along with Daisy and Mavis. The three engines worked hard to keep the branch running. Bertie pitched in too by picking up extra passengers to assist. But with all his excessive running on the roads, cracks started to appear and the roads became more and more uncomfortable for the passengers. Uh, ouch! There goes another one! Another what? replied Toby. Another crack. I swear these roads become more and more unstable the more I go. This won't do, said Toby. These roads need to be in good shape, otherwise you won't be able to help us with the passengers. Toby and Bertie thought for a moment. Then Bertie had an idea. Ah, I know. Although, I don't know how helpful he'll be. Who? There's a steamroller working along the Scarlowy Railway. Oh, what's his name? George, that's it. Oh, I've heard of him. Scarlowy told Edward that he's absolutely horrid to us Indians. Always going on about the railways being no good and ripping up our rails. He is not great to his fellow road vehicles either. That's why I said he may not be the best choice, but what other option do we have? <sighs> I'll go let Sir Topham know that we'll need George's... assistance. And with that, Toby puffed off to Natter. When he arrived, he saw Sir Topham Hatter on the platform. Excuse me, sir. Ah, Toby, I was just about to check on you. Is there something you need? Well, sir, the roads on the branch line are very damaged from all the help Bertie's been giving us lately. The passengers aren't too happy about being bounced around on them. Yes, I've received some of these complaints myself. I might just have to cancel a few of the trains. Actually, Bertie and I came to the conclusion that the best chance of resolving this matter is to ask George the steamroller for help. Brilliant, Shoby. I'll call his manager and make the arrangements at once. So Topman walked into his office. I hope this doesn't come back to bite me in the end. The next day, Toby trundled in the tidbit. Then, he heard a whistle he had never heard before. That must be him. No sooner than Toby had finished his sentence, he saw George rolling in. Why, hello there, Toby said politely. You must be George, I assume? Can't you read? It says it right there, you old kettle. Toby was most taken aback by his response, but decided to brush it off. Anyways, you'll need to make your way up to the branch to start repairing the roof. Listen, wooden box. I don't take orders from you, so why don't you go be useless somewhere else? I don't have time to stay here and take this. Come on, girls. With pleasure, they replied. Come on, George. The faster we do this job, the faster we can head back home. George begrudgingly agreed and made his way down the branch. On the branch, George started working on the roads and was enjoying himself. That was until he heard a familiar horn. Out of the way, Slowpoke! You're making me late! You'll be later still if I wasn't here fixing the roads! That's debatable. Why, you twit! Find another way! <laughs> Go pop a tire while you're at it! <laughs> Later at Farquhar, Bertie was telling the others about George. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to ask for his help. Yes, he seems to be more trouble than what he's worth. Daisy snorted. 
You can say that again. Nearly got stuck at the crossing because of him. <sighs> I just don't understand why he's so rude. George soon arrived to the station and stopped for a rest. Alright, I'll check with the station master to make sure we're good to go. Huh, <sighs> about time we let this silk branch line. George looked over and saw all the engines and Bertie were talking. He was about to blow his whistle to break them up when he overheard what they were talking about. You know, one thing I don't get about George is why he complains so much about our rails. Like you said, Toby, why would he be so rude? I agree, Daisy. I mean, if it wasn't for our branch, he wouldn't be doing any work right now. George sat there silent. Come on, George. We have one last patch to fix. Luckily, it's near the start of the branch, so we could head on home afterwards. How's that sound? Huh? Oh, yeah. That sounds good. George's driver hopped into him, and they made their way. George blew his whistle, and everyone got startled. Oh! That's a good note to let you off on. We should get back to work. Bertie's right. We have things to do. You know, Clarabelle, George was departing when we heard him. Yeah, I wonder how long he was there. George looked at his work, feeling very pleased with himself, when Bertie arrived. Are you gonna just sit there, or are you gonna let me through? Ugh! You silly buses! You really can't appreciate- Any day now? Listen here, you bread loaf on wheels! I- No, you listen! You've been nothing but horrid to us here, and I won't stand for it! Your work is good, but your attitude is just rotten to the core! You keep going like this, and no one will want to be around you, not even your driver. Then you'll be alone, no work to do, and no one to talk to. Leave that on your mind. And Bertie rolled away. Once his work was done, George left the branch that day. A much quieter steamroller. He had a lot on his mind.